Hello everyone, hi 9 here and welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial we will look at the ANAPQ159 radar. When I was making a tutorial on the air-to-air -air aspect I realized uh, that the subject uh, became quite overwhelming for a single video. So instead I opted to, to splitting it into three parts by uh, having the radar first, then the air-to-air -air missiles, then the guns. So the APQ159 radar is uh, a pulse radar which in practice means that it uh, does not filter out uh, ground clutter and it was uh, standard until Pulse Doppler radar uh, started to uh, make an appearance into the mid 70s and early 80s. This radar has a maximum uh, search range uh, of uh, 14 nautical miles but I find it uh, uh, to be only usable uh, uh, at a maximum of 20 nautical miles. The radar is not capable of beyond visual range combat, nor uh, any air-to-air -air ground mode at all. In truth, uh, it is quite terrible, but uh, like all equipment, even though it is terrible, used correctly, it can be deadly, and uh, this one is no exception. Looking at this picture that I have stolen, <coughs> I mean borrowed from Chuck's Guide, links are in the description, we can see the detection zone of the radar. It scans in total 11 degrees up and down, except in 40 miles range where it's uh, down to 8 and in total 90 degrees uh, left to right. So it has uh, quite an impressive detection zone but from my experience it's uh, really struggling picking up targets uh, further than 20 uh, miles out unless they are flying straight towards you or is a really large target uh, like a bomber. The radar is paired with the ASG39 lead computing optical sight system which is a targeting computer. It is capable of uh, delivering ranging and firing solutions to the pilot and displaying it uh, on the HUD. I will go through the symbology on the HUD uh, in uh, the next two videos, but in this I just wanted to provide you a general overview on the, the theory of the radar. So how do we use this radar? Let's uh, look down on our uh, uh, left behind the throttle. Here we have our radar mode selector uh, switch, off, standby and operational and test. This is our range uh, uh, selector switch. This one chooses how far you will uh, detect targets on the radar scope. And this is our TDC button or target designator switch. This is one uh, our antenna tilt button. And this is our target acquisition button. Forward on our scope we can uh, uh, select our uh, uh, brightness, our persistence, our um, uh, what is it called? Uh, intensity of course, our uh, brightness and our pitch. So we can change our brightness like so, persistence, let's just tilt the antenna a bit down like so and our uh, our intensity, like here, our brightness, and the pitch of uh, this one. So let me show you uh, a few keys that you uh, need to bind, or at least you should bind. I have my radar uh, mode selector uh, switch binded. This is not necessary, but uh, I prefer to have it so. Our my um, uh, radar range selector is also binded. I also like to have my uh, radar elevation tilt control binded. It's, I find it uh, very useful to be able to control the, the angle of my antenna. The TDC buttons, the target designation controller, up, down, left and right. Target acquisition, dogfight mode forward. Dogfight aft, or dogfight guns as it's called, and uh, dogfight resume center. And of course you need to bind your weapon release button, that is to fire missiles, and your gun, uh, gun button, the first detent and the second detent. You can of course uh, bind these buttons as you please, but I recommend that you take a look at uh, Chuck's guide, there's a lot of uh, useful uh, information in that uh, that manual uh, for uh, your key bindings. So as you see I can control my uh, range like so. 
and by antenna control antenna tilt I mean and here I'm controlling my TDC so that is pretty much it for uh, this video I hope it uh, was useful and uh, I'll see you in the next video where I will talk about uh, air-to-air missiles so I'll see you around bye bye